in impossible ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. As a member of the Pipe Organ Committee, I'd like to update you our, you <laughs> update you as to where we are regarding the, the proposed pipe organ. Uh, we previously reported to you of the congregation's overwhelming support and approval of this project. The committee then further explored issues regarding structural support, insurance, the contract with Harold, and projections of the amount of money that might be raised. All of these issues were then reported to consistory during its April 12th meeting. After discussions on the report, consistory unanimously approved all of the pipe organ committee's recommendations. The primary one being the recommendation to proceed with fundraising. The, com the committee itself and consistory are not looking to use any general fund revenues. This project will be completely self-funded. We recognize that not everyone is in support, nor has the ability to financially support this project. We are therefore asking for voluntary participation in this fundraising effort. Already we have commitments from, for about $155,000 from several families, so we're looking to raise an additional $145,000. For those gathered here this morning, the Pipe Organ Committee has placed a fundraising package in your church mailbox for you to pick up at the end of the service. For members watching online, you'll soon be receiving a letter from the Pipe Organ Committee with a pledge card. Finally, for our friends watching online, you can respond by mail or online. At the bottom of the screen is our website address where you find our mailing address and a link for giving via an electronic fund transfer. During, on the ele electronic fund transfer, you'll be able to note the donation for the pipe organ fund. We ask for you to prayerfully consider and submit, submit a pledge to financially support the project. We've designed a fundraising plan to allow donors, if need be, to spread out those donations for 36 months. We will provide you an envelope to mail the pledge cards directly back to CCC, CCRC, to the attention of the financial secretary. This is to preserve the donation's confidentiality. While the ultimate goal is to raise the full 300,000, the first step is to raise 200,000 as quickly as possible. The 200,000 will cover all of the costs of materials and allow us to place orders for those materials right away. We hope to quickly obtain this amount so that we can minimize the effect inflation will have on the cost of those materials. The figure of the 300,000 has built into it a 10% for inflation, so the sooner we can place the order, we just might realize a lower inflationary percentage. And before I close, I'd like to speak to those that questioned the spending on the organ rather than benevolences, mission, or humanitarian needs. We hear that concern, and we made sure that it was raised in our, comment, in our discussion with consistory for their consideration. We respect the opinion and appreciate you reminding us to keep benevolences as a critical item in the budget and plans for our future. After many thoughts and prayers, we've come to see this as not an either or, but a yes and. We see the pipe organ deepening and extending our worship service and now with our live streaming capability, we are reaching a larger geography than ever before. Enhancing the word and service is part of our expression of faith. And we know this generous, generous congregation can continue to think creatively about how we can also have our giving be a deeper expression of our faith. This congregation that immediately responded when asked for those in the Ukraine or for the youth at Orange Farm Will, will, we are confident, continue to explore how to ensure that our giving is not only in reaction to, but a deeper part of our commitment to the community around us and the greater community beyond. 
Throughout this process, we ask for your prayers as we embark on this journey to bring our joy to our mission and spread the gospel. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Please join me in the thanksgiving sentences. The building of this church provides space for our worship, work, and play, for hearing the word of God, for sharing the silence of prayer, for the sound of song, and for sitting together at a meal. This congregation strives to offer love and support in a way that bonds us together when we are apart from one another. The God who lovingly created this world, who steadfastly bids us to be sisters and brothers, dwells indeed in our midst. We give thanks, O God, for the presence of your active and living spirit. We offer our Let us pray. 
Hear our thanks, O God, for your promises of peace and reconciliation. Make our gratitude like rain that falls on new mown grass and like showers that water the earth to bring a harvest of fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Beloved in the Lord, we will now ordain and install the elders and deacon of this church. The Lord Jesus Christ is the source of all Christian ministry who through the ages has called men and women to serve him. Through the Holy Spirit, all who believe and are baptized receive a ministry to witness to Jesus as Lord and Savior and to love and serve those with whom they live and work. We are all ambassadors for Christ who reconciles and redeems us. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Following the resurrection and ascension of Christ, God gave the church apostles, prophets, teachers, deeds of power, gifts of healing, and forms of assistance and leadership. We stand within a tradition where God calls and empowers elders and deacons and ministers of the word and sacrament. The congregation has elected the following people to the offices of elders and deacons. Please come forward as I read your names. Richard Harder and Elizabeth Schmidt, to be installed to the office of deacon. Elisa Galaro and James Hansen to be ordained and installed to the office of elder. And Carrie Painter and Sarah Smith to be ordained and installed to the office of deacon. Deacons and elders are called to serve as Christ served. We look to them to be people of spiritual commitment, exemplary life, compassionate spirit, and sound judgment. Deacons are set apart for a ministry of mercy, service, and outreach. They gather gifts and offerings, care for them faithfully, and distribute them with wisdom and compassion to persons in need and for purposes that advance God's kingdom on earth. Deacons visit and comfort the distressed, provide for whatever necessities may arise, and assist the congregation at services at worship. Elders are set apart for a ministry of watchful and responsible care for the welfare and order of the church. They have oversight of all members, including one another, the deacons and the minister, equipping everyone to live in harmony with God's word. They ensure the word of God is rightly proclaimed and taught and the sacraments faithfully administered. Elders assist the minister with their good counsel and serve all Christians with advice, consolation, and encouragement. Elders and deacons, together with the ministers, form the consistory to lead God's people in proclaiming good news to the poor, righteousness to the nations, and peace among all. The consistory provides for the welfare of the church, stewardship of property and finances, and the spiritual benefit and growth for, for all Christ's people. As the three offices of deacon, elder, and minister of word and sacrament are united in Christ, 
So also in the church, one office is not separate from the others. The minister of word and sacrament does not serve without the elder and neither without the deacon. Together, they enable the mission of the whole church. Everything in the church will be done decently and in order when faithful persons are called to these offices and responsibly fulfill their charge. Brothers and sisters, before Almighty God and in the presence of this congregation, you are asked to give a sincere answer to the following questions. Do you confess together with us and the church throughout the ages your faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, please answer with, we, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Do you believe in your heart that you are called by Christ's church and therefore by God himself to this office? Do you believe the books of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God and the perfect doctrine of salvation, rejecting all contrary beliefs? If so, I ask you all to answer with yes, truly, with all my heart. Yes, truly, with all my heart. Will you be diligent in your study of Holy Scripture and in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? Will you accept the church's order and governance, submitting to ecclesiastical discipline should you become delinquent in either life or doctrine? And will you be loyal to the witness and work of the Reformed Church in America, using all your abilities to further its Christian mission here and throughout the world? If so, please answer with, with the help of God, I will. As deacons, will you faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully show God's love and care, gather and distribute the offerings of God's people, visit and comfort the distressed, minister, minister to the poor and needy, and strive to advance God's reign of justice and peace. If so, I ask you, Rich, Carrie, Sarah, and Elizabeth, to please answer with the help of God, I will. As elders, will you faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully study God's word, over oversee this household of faith, encourage spiritual growth, maintaining loving discipline, and provide for the proclamation of the gospel and the celebration of the sacraments. If so, I ask you, Elisa, to answer, with the help of God, I will. We will now continue with the ordination. I invite those who have served as elders and deacons on consistory, also on greater consistory, to please join us for the ordination and the installation with the laying on of hands. Elisa. I ask now the elders to please join me. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as a fire upon Elisa Galaro, and fill her with grace and power for this ministry of elder. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, I declare that Elisa Galaro is ordained to the office of elder. And now all the deacons, please. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as a fire upon Carrie Painter, and fill her with grace and power for this ministry of deacon. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, I declare that Kerry Painter is now ordained to the office of deacon. Amen. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as a fire upon Sarah Smith, and fill her with grace and power for this ministry of deacon, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, I declare that Sarah Smith is now ordained to the office of deacon. Amen. You may be seated, and we will continue now with the installation. Elders Elisa Galaro and deacons Richard Harder, Carrie Painter, Elizabeth Schmidt, and Sarah Smith, be faithful in performing your duties. Magnify the one who has called you to these high and holy offices. Be zealous for the Church of Christ, hospitable, prudent, upright, devout, and self-controlled. Love goodness holding always to the mystery of the faith. Members of Christ Community Reform Church, please rise to affirm your covenant with the elders and deacons whom God has given us. Beloved in the Lord Jesus, do you receive in the name of the Lord these deacons and elders as duly elected and ordained servants of Christ? Do you promise to respect them for the sake of the offices for which they have been chosen and ordained? Do you promise to encourage and pray for them to labor together in obedience to the gospel for the unity, purity, and the peace of the church, the welfare of the whole world, and the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, we do. We do. You may be seated. Beloved people of God, receive these deacons and elders as Christ's own servants. Support them in love, that their work may bear fruit. In the name and by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that these brothers and sisters are duly installed deacons and elders of this church. Let us pray. Almighty God, you taught us to pray for ourselves and others, to give thanks for all of life. Bless these elders and deacons. Keep them strong and faithful that your church may prosper in peace. Grant them wisdom and courage that they may fulfill their charge to the glory of Jesus. Bless our congregation that we together may support these elders and deacons with prayer, cooperation, and encouragement to guard them from growing weary in doing what is right. Inspire your church with your spirit of power, unity, and peace so that all who trust you may live together in love. In your name we pray, amen. Congratulations. I ask the congregation to please stand and once the uh, Consistory members have received their certificate to turn, ask them to turn around and face the congregation as we will sing to them the Lord's blessing.
Our first reading this morning from Acts 11, from verse 1. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So Peter went up to Jerusalem, and the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to an uncircumcised man and eat with him? Then Peter began to explain to them step by step, saying, and then he gives the whole account of what Kelly just gave us in the word for the children, um, of the blanket coming down. And then I read from verse uh, 10. This happened three times, and then everything was pulled up into heaven again. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered in the man's house and he told us that he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you the message by which you and the entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had been upon us in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, who he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I, that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Revelation 21 verse 1 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy uh, city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. Then uh, they will be His peoples, and God Himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. Also, He said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. reading from the Gospel of John 13 verse 31 when he had gone Jesus said now the man son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him if God has been glorified in him God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once little children I'm with you only for a little longer you will look for me and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I gave you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. In the movie Chocolat, uh, we meet this very strict town mayor, um, Comte de Renault, and um, he expelled the Protestant Huguenots from his village, and he controlled everything in that cow- uh, uh, little town, little French town, even the sermons of the young priest. And the, the idea was that he wants to keep this small town clean, especially in Lent. But then, Vianne, dressed in red, the liturgical color of Pentecost arrives and um, with her child and she opens a chocolate, can you be, a chocolate shop in Lent, can you believe it? And magically, she feeds the needs of so many people. She's a stranger, an outsider, a single parent, unorthodox, but full of life and creativity and spontaneous. Before long, some outsiders called the River Rats also join in this joyous social space that she created. Comte knows that she must be stopped and there a battle starts between the clean and the unclean. And although before long it becomes obvious that the so-called unclean are actually living a life of goodness. And the so-called clean missed the heart of the gospel, excluding others. The movie ends with a fantastic sermon by Pierre Henry when he decided not to follow the mayor's sermon, but he ended with this. I want to talk about Christ's humanity. I mean, how he lived his life on earth. His kindness, tolerance, We must measure ourselves not by what we don't do, but what we or what we deny, what we resist, or whom we exclude. Instead, we should measure ourselves by what we embrace and what we create, and whom we include. So the movie Chocolat invites us to reconsider what holiness really is, what the meaning of the gospel is. The goodness of creation and the gospel of inclusivity. It's not so much, actually, um, if you see what spiritual growth is here, it's not so much uh, about learning more and more, but it's, uh, it's more about unlearning. Unlearning unhealthy exclusionary beliefs and attitudes. And there's many biblical stories. In many biblical stories, all the characters in this story is actually inviting us to think again about our own way of doing and thinking. The central theme in Acts is the mission of God. And you'll see concentric circles from Jerusalem going to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So it's crossing boundaries in a geographical sense, but also in a cultural, social and religious and gender boundaries are crossed so that the wonderful news, the best news ever, can reach the ends of the earth. And in Acts 11, we come to a very critical hurdle. It's so important that this whole uh, story is being repeated twice in Acts 10 and in Acts 11, where we find Peter, the Apostle Peter, a Jew, with the cultural and religious boundaries that obstructed the spread of the gospel. And we also meet Cornelius, the Gentile Roman soldier. And he's being introduced to us very interestingly. Remember, a Roman soldier, um, actually in, in 10 verse 1 and 2 it says, a centurion of Italian cohort, he was a devout man fearing God with all his household. He gave alms generously to people and prayed constantly to God. Isn't that interesting? That he's a Roman centurion, 
But he feared God. He loved God. He, he actually prayed to God and he gave alms. Although from a different religion. Jews did not like or trust the Gentiles. Because Gentiles had different rules on many things. And especially the food that they ate. Are yeah, foods that the Jews would not eat. So the Jews would not eat or even drink with Gentiles. And Peter could not imagine eating or drinking with a, 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 a Gentile Roman. So the response to God's picnic blanket that came out of heaven was not just uh, like um, mere squeamishness that, uh, that, oh no, I don't like these kind of animals. It was a menu that was repulsing from the inside. It's unacceptable food because I'm an observant Jew. And three times he says no to God. God says, eat this. And he says, no, I will stay ritually clean. And all the years of religious conditioning just comes back. It's a beautiful illustration of this conditioning that keeps on pulling us away from the heart of the gospel. I've got a beautiful illustration that I read about this golden retriever, also called Bailey, the same as <laughs> the, the box uh, golden retriever. And uh, Bailey was a lovely and a kind best friend dog. And, um, and Bailey presides over whatever goes on at the backyard. But they were bounds to the area where Bailey could go. So they set up an invisible fence under the ground so that when Bailey comes close to the fence, there would be a sound going off and also a mildly unpleasant tingling sensation. And that over and over conditioned poor Bailey that when it comes to that area, it just automatically stopped, like a repulsive feeling from inside. The same as what Peter felt, do I really have to eat these things? Do I really have to eat with Gentiles? those on the other side of the boundary, the tradition and laws of ritual cleanliness um, and the table fellowship of the uh, Gentiles was strictly taboo for Peter. But the vision of God just breaks down all these uh, boundaries. And the blanket from heaven actually carries the promise of God's unimaginable generosity for all mankind. And for all of creation. What a gift coming down. God's blanket was blotting out the boundary between Jew and Gentile. Holy and unholy. The boundary between man and female. The a boundary that we find usually as obstructive to the gospel. That's why God says what God made clean was uh, clean indeed. Aware of this invisible social, cultural boundaries, we can move forward and we can really make a difference. And that's exactly what happened later in, in, uh, in Acts. We read in Acts 11, uh, in Acts uh, 15 verse 9. In cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Not the them and the us, but us. In uh, Galatians 3 29. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. No longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ. You can just imagine how shocking it must have been when um, people read this, especially the Jews, read this piece and see that a Gentile Roman soldier got saved, baptized and received the Holy Spirit and was included in God's grace. And remember, the whole household was there. And so the children, the women, the cleaners, the soldiers, the bodyguards, all were there. And they were all included in God's grace. God's dream is that all things become new. We read that in uh, Revelation. As the new Jerusalem came down, like the blanket from Peter, of Peter, we see the joining of heaven and earth. We see a union like a bride and a bridegroom. A new heaven and a new earth where God is dwelling. Dwelling in what we sometimes say are unclean or, um, or not acceptable. And it's important for us to just become aware of those boundaries 
that we really don't want to see, these invisible boundaries. Because every day that happens. You will meet people every day as a blanket coming down. And uh, what is the invisible boundary that stops you from really connecting in this extremely polarized society? Jesus calls us to cross the invisible fences. And maybe just think for a while, if you meet somebody from another political party, or you drive by a house where there's a Biden flag, what happens with you and the, just in the invisible impulse in you? Or you go past a house with a Trump flag, what happens in your inside? What happens when you go past some denomination or another one? What happens if you go past uh, or you meet somebody in this faith tradition or in another faith tradition? What happens with the invisible boundaries that comes up from a different ethnicity or race or socioeconomic class or sexual preference? All those things are barriers that breaks down the connection of true humankind and love for the gospel to spread. And maybe you can bring it even closer home to, to, to the way that you treat people that hurt you or that you have hurt or even in your own personal being. There are aspects of our lives that we devise to the sides and we're not embracing it all and looking at what are the gifts that God gave you and you just see it as automatically rep repulsive. But it's actually God's gift. Like fashion that dictates the in-group and the out-group, that happens many times with us in society, but also in the church, in, in congregations. And we, we, we kind of look at how people look, how they dress, uh, the talents they have, or the skills, how much or how little they do, where they come from, what they studied, and then suddenly we just make these categories and we relate differently to them. But God's example here is to let the blanket come down and see everybody. All the people that you perhaps have in the back of your mind now that say, oh, really, do you really want me to think differently about that? Yes, that's the invitation. Because how does it feel to be excluded? On the front of the um, bulletin you probably saw that bench that is um, uh, an artwork in front of the Speed Art Museum in Louisville. Um, and it is a, a beautiful um, example of how it feels to be on the outside. If you were on the inside of that bench, it's nice and warm and we can be together. But how does it feel to stand on the outside? And Susan Griffin described it beautifully. She said, there is a circle of humanity and I can feel its warmth. But I'm forever outside. We really must focus on what binds us together. We can choose to emphasize the aspects of our traditions and our theologies and our um, other um, convictions that works to exclusion and suspicion. Or we can focus on what builds interdependence, what binds people together. If we do not do that, we will experience the hatred as we've ex we experienced this past few days in Buffalo. But that's just one of so many places where hatred leads to devastation in people's lives. That's why the gospel is for all. But the interesting thing is, the place for the people that should change is not just them. It was Peter that had to change. For the world to change is for Peter to come to a conversion. Not the other people. He had to change. He had to view people through God's eyes. And it's actually so bad for me that uh, the way that um, the word metanoia is being translated in, um, in the English Bible as only repentance or repent. Because that's such a short uh, a part of what uh, metanoia means. Meta meaning beyond, new. And uh, no, uh, noia means and refers to thoughts and thinking, your mind. It's a new consciousness. It's a totally new way of thinking and being and living. That's metanoia. And we need to ask the Spirit to really create new life in all of us. 
God wants to make everything new, but God wants to start here, not with the other people. And open our eyes to the way that we look at the people around us. And we see how Jesus did it in John um, 13, to love one another. And that is the way that the world will see who sent us. The word is still among us. Yes, Jesus has gone up to heaven, but the word is still among us, and we see Christ in other people. Let's just end with a short, um, going back to the story of Bailey. So after a snow blizzard, a blanket of snow from heaven obscured the yard's visual boundary, and Bailey escaped. Um, as you can just imagine, the snow days, there were children outside, and the children were whizzing down the best sledging run in the neighborhood, which happens to be located just behind the backyard where Bailey usually is. So he just heard this young, these children playing and went, ran off. And Bailey was playing with the children, unbounded, happy, carefree, running and chasing the sledges as they sled um, uh, along. And I think that is the invitation of God for us to let go of these invisible boundaries and to listen to the call of God's love to include to be aware of the joy of the blanket coming down and the bounty that God offers us Amen Let us affirm our faith in the beautiful words of the Spanish Confession. We believe in God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, Creator of all nations and churches, Creator of all languages and races. We believe in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, God who became flesh as a human for humankind, God who became flesh in the time for all time, God who became flesh in one culture for all cultures. God who became flesh in love and grace for all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit through whom God announces God's presence in Jesus Christ and in our people, in our cultures, by whom God, the creator of all things, gives our new creatures whose infinite gifts makes us one body, the body of Christ. We believe in the church, which is universal, because it's the sign of God's rule, whose faithfulness is shown in its shades, and all the colors and all the tongues sing the same praises. We believe in the rule of God, the day of the great fiesta, when all the colors of creation will form a harmonious rainbow, when all people will participate in a joyful fest, and all the universe will sing the same song. And because we believe, we commit ourselves to, to love for those who do not love, and to dream for those who do not dream until that day when hope becomes reality. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O so. oh God, whose love exceeds all imagination, help us cross over invisible fences that separate us. Open our eyes so that we may see you in each other. Warm our hearts that they may be new. Teach us to love as you love. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O oh Master, let me not seek so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives. It is in self-forgetting that one finds. It is in pardoning that one is pardoned. It is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. O oh God, and hear us as we pray for Carolyn Cromer, Mario Forte, Nancy Lindsay, Sharon Ryder, and our homebound members. And we also pray for Ken Schmidt and everyone who's been affected by the pandemic, or refugees, victims of natural disasters, war, violence, and especially the situation in Ukraine. And Lord, our heart break today as we pray for the victims and the families of a horrific buffalo shooting. Lord, you only can change hearts. Please comfort those who mourn. Creator God, we are your people. We look to the future with optimism, with courage and faith in you as we pursue our call to provide justice and fullness of life for all people. We pray that every man, woman and child may develop their potential and meet in themselves and in other people yourself. May we be a totally welcoming community of faith, which you are the center, joined hand in hand with our sisters and brothers. And hear us now, O Lord, as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying in one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen.
May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deeply. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people, so that you may tirelessly work for justice and freedom and peace among all people. May God bless you with a gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and the loss of all they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God, the Divine Parent, and Jesus Christ, the Incarnate Word, and the Holy Spirit, the flame of life, be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.